Hi guys, and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. Um, or he Heidi's Fish Tanks? I don't know what this channel is called. Anyways, I had just filmed a kind of Clownfish 101 video, and I was in the middle of editing it, and my computer could not process the, um, the video because I had my camera settings a little bit too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and refilm it, which is probably good because there were a couple things that I started. So what I wanna say is, <laughs> First off, my baby is going to be joining us because she is awake. I have very limited time to film, and this is one of the few times that I can film. So, this is Irene. Irene, say hi. You got crazy morning hair right now. Okay, so you might, most people who are keeping clownfish, it's probably their first saltwater fish. It makes a really, really great first saltwater fish. So, I'm going to assume for the sake of this video a couple of things. One, I'm going to assume that you have kept freshwater fish before. And two, I'm going to assume that you are on a budget. There are much more expensive ways to do this and you can definitely go more advanced. You can spend thousands of dollars on um, saltwater tanks, but this is gonna be like limited, limited budget, but still what I think would be adequate for the fish. So let me start off by saying saltwater is not as hard as you might think. Really, the difference between salt water and fresh water in terms of work is I have to mix my salt. It's really, really not as hard as I thought it would be. But you have to be on top of your water testing. So if you're not familiar with the nitrogen cycle, I should probably film a video about that. In hindsight, I probably should have done that first. Um, I would not keep saltwater fish until you are familiar with the nitrogen cycle and you have to be testing your water. Honestly, if you're keeping freshwater fish, I would really recommend testing your water too because unless you're testing your water, you don't know what's going on in there. You have no idea if your water change schedule is adequate or your stocking level is adequate. So you do need to be testing your water. So if you're watching this video and you have no idea what the nitrogen cycle is, pause this video, go look that up, wait until you have a really good grasp of what the nitrogen cycle is. That said, um, one of the biggest differences in my tank is that I change water when my nitrates are a little bit lower than I would do in my freshwater tank. Hey baby, let's not play with that, okay? Um, I change water in my saltwater tank whenever my nitrates reach 20 parts per million. And um, if you don't know what, what nitrates are, you don't know what 20 parts per mil million are, again, go look that up. There are people that keep reefs that are cringing to hear me say I, I change it at 20 parts per million. If you are keeping coral, that's a whole different ball game. And coral is what makes saltwater difficult. There are also some really delicate fish that you can keep, um, but clownfish are not one of those delicate fish. And they do fine as long as you change your water at about 20 parts per mil. I also should have added this at the beginning. Everything that I'm going to say is an opinion. It's based on my personal experience. It's based on the research that I've done. Never believe something that someone tells you just because they're on the internet. Do your own research and do what feels right for you. So I'm not an expert by any means. This is just my experience with keeping clownfish. So those are the differences. I have to test my salt levels, my salinity. Um, I change my water when I get to 20 parts per million instead of to 40, and I have to mix the salt. Those are the big differences. Um, and in terms of cost, there are ways to keep, my baby keeps trying to play with an electrical cord. Let me see if I can find her something else to play with. Hold on a sec. Okay, we moved a little bit further away from the outlet because we shouldn't play with electricity. Anyways, hopefully this video will still get filmed. I have to test my salinity, I have to test my water. Now, for those of you that have done fresh water before, you might be wondering, can I use my um, fresh water test kit on my salt water tank, or do I have to get my own salt water test kit? Because they do make salt water test kits. Um, I use the API Master Liquid Test Kit, and I talked to my local fish store who I trust long before I trust strangers on the internet. Um, he's been keeping saltwater fish for decades. So I, and I trust him. Sometimes you don't always trust pet store employees, but him I do trust. And what he said is, no, you can absolutely use the API. If you're using API, you can use the liquid test kit. Sometimes the strips you can't use, some other tests you can't use, but the liquid test kit for fresh water, you can use on your saltwater tank. You just have to use the high range pH, not the low range pH on it. If you're keeping coral, you probably want to get the reef test kit because you're going to need to test for all kinds of other things like 
phosphates. Mm. Honestly, I've never cut coral, so I am not the person to ask about that, but um, you're gonna want a special test kit for coral. Um, but for clownfish, again, very hardy fish, you can use your freshwater kit that you already have. You can also use all the freshwater equipment that you already have. I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm going to have to get a, um, a freshwater or a separate bucket for my, my saltwater water changes and a separate siphon and all of that. You can use what you already have. Just switch it out. Um, just clean it off, I mean. So, anyways, these are the things that you need for a clownfish, in my opinion. Everything is an opinion, and you're going to see various ways people keep clownfish. In my opinion, I would not want to do a clownfish in anything smaller than a 10-gallon tank. Now, there are people on the other side of me, like I've seen Taylor Nicole Dean says that she would rather keep a, a clownfish in a 30-gallon tank. Um, and I've definitely seen people keep clownfish in smaller tanks. They're pretty hardy and they're not huge and they don't use a ton of swimming room. They don't have an enormous bio load. So I've seen people even keep them in as small of a tank as a Pico three gallon. Maybe a five gallon, maybe, but honestly, I just think that you're gonna have more freedom if you do a 10 gallon tank in the bare minimum. Mine are in a 29 gallon tank. And as with everything in terms of fish keeping, bigger is better in terms of water quality. Um, I think a 29 gallon is probably a perfect tank because you have some options to add a couple of tank mates in there. And when you do water changes, you don't have to change an enormous amount of water because a one five gallon bucket is a pretty substantial water change. But say you're doing a 10 gallon tank, um, the other thing that you're going to need is filtration. Now in a saltwater tank, a huge portion of your filtration is going to come from your live rock. So your rock develops beneficial bacteria on it and it serves as your biological filtration. If these words don't mean anything to you, again, I'd go back to that nitrogen cycle. So you have some options. You can do live rock, you can do dry rock, or there are some people who do no rock. I would really recommend doing some sort of rock in your tank um, because it, it does nothing but help. It does nothing but add extra filtration. So whether you do live or dry is completely up to you. Live rock means that it is it has been cured, it's been soaked, it has beneficial bacteria already living on it. Um, one of the problems with live rock is that sometimes you can get something like hitchhikers. Um, all kinds of creepy crawlies, little things that live in the ocean now are in your tank and can cause some problems. But the benefit of live rock is that it can uh, seed your bacteria and you can finish your cycle a lot faster with live rock. And it already usually has the pretty coralline algae on it, that purple color that everyone kind of wants in their tank. So it's up to you. If you put dry rock in, eventually it will get seeded. Eventually you're going to get that coralline algae. Um, it's just you might have a longer waiting process before you get there. Another benefit to dry rock is that it's generally less expensive. Now how much rock you need is going to depend less on the size of your tank, less on the weight of the rock, and more how porous the rock is. The general rule is one pound per gallon, but honestly, how many little pores in space does the bacteria have to live is what's going to kind of determine that. So you could have a very light rock that's very porous. You could have a very heavy rock that doesn't have a lot of pores in it. Um, so I would really, you know, use your best judgment, test your water. Now, if you don't do any rock at all, you will still get coralline algae growing on decorations. I do have some fake decorations in my tank, which is really not popular among uh, YouTubers, but I have kids and my kids want a little pink castle, darn it. So we have a little pink castle. Um, that will also grow beneficial bacteria. Anything in your tank will grow beneficial bacteria. Then in terms of substrate, um, you've got some options. You can go completely bare bottom, which is going to be a little bit easier to clean. Obviously, it's going to be less expensive because you don't have to pay for substrate. I personally would recommend a substrate in a saltwater tank um, if for no other reason 
<laughs> hi Irene if for no other reason than the fact that if you get crushed coral or aragonite sand it's going to buffer your pH um, saltwater fish need a, a higher pH than most of us have coming out of the tap so I have aragonite sand in my saltwater tank um, and another reason why you might want sand is if you're going to be keeping other things in that tank besides clownfish like sand sifting gobies or wrasse which need uh, sand in order to kind of bury themselves um, it's up to you whether you want to do substrate or not in terms of filtration in a small tank you can actually use a hang on back filter you don't have to use like a canister filter you don't have to have a sump you can use a hang on back um, I also keep a hang on back protein skimmer on my tank I got the Rio Nano one which is really cheap and honestly I would not recommend it because it broke and it wasn't very effective um, but a protein skimmer is what's going to take out kind of basically gunk think of it as gunk from your tank um, it turns on really fine bubbles and causes all the gunk to come up and it'll keep your water a little bit nicer um, with clownfish if you don't have coral you don't have to have a protein skimmer it does help a lot so I would recommend a protein skimmer but in a nano tank it's probably okay not to have a protein skimmer um, I've been running my tank without it ever since mine broke and honestly my fish seem happier because my protein skimmer was making really loud noises that was stressing them out but someday I would like another better protein skimmer honestly most of what I do I do with water changes if you're willing to put in the work water changes are not that hard in a, a really small tank now in terms of water changes these are some things that you're going to need you're going to need something to test your salinity I use a hydrometer uh, you can use a refractometer which is going to be much more accurate and you have if you have more sensitive fish or if you have coral I would recommend a refractometer um, but if you just have clownfish I think a hydrometer is okay they can tolerate swings in salinity a little better than some other fish and they can go a little bit lower salinity than some other saltwater fish um, but you do want to maintain consistency. So what I do is I dip my hydrometer into my main tank. I measure my salinity, which is usually 1.020. That's where I like to keep mine. And then I go to my tap and I fill my bucket with tap water. Um, and I mix in salt. Um, and you're going to need a marine salt. You can't use aquarium salt. You can't use table salt, it needs to be a marine salt. And the reason for that is because the marine salt, something like Instant Ocean, or actually right now, I'm even using Top Fin. Here you go, baby. Which is like the, the PetSmart brand. Um, they're gonna have other things in it besides just salt that will benefit your fish. You can't just use aquarium salt, which is that stuff that comes in like the little milk carton looking thing. Um, you're going to need to use marine salt. If you're going to keep coral, you're probably going to want a nicer salt than instant ocean. But for clownfish, again, I think that pretty much any marine salt is going to do the job. So I go to my tap. I do use tap water. Um, if you're using, if you're doing coral or some more sensitive fish, you probably want to use RODI water, um, which you can buy at the store or you can buy a unit. But if you're just doing clownfish, you don't have to use it. You can use tap water. And I use a dechlorinator. I use Seachem Prime is the one that I use, but and it's kind of nice because that also helps if you ever have like a, it's like a little backup plan if you ever have like a swing in nitrates or ammonia or nitrite or you have a mini cycle suddenly occur or whatever that is the nice thing about prime and it's highly concentrated so it actually ends up being cheaper because you don't go through it as much but really any dechlorinator is fine and then i mix in my salt and look at the instructions on your salt to see how much you need to mix but you have to test it so after you, each time i add salt i mix it all in and then i test it with my hydrometer to make sure that it matches the salinity in my tank the other thing is you want to make sure that the temperature matches your tank so um, most people are going to need a heater in their saltwater tank I personally don't run heaters in any of my tanks because I live in Arizona or any of my freshwater tanks because I live in Arizona and my house is 79 degrees all year round it is hot here but most people are going to need 
a heater. Um, and so with a salt water tank, even if I keep my house at 79 degrees, any swing at all is a little bit more delicate. So I do have a heater in my salt water tank just to make sure that it stays consistent. Maybe in the evening, my, my house gets a little cooler, that kind of thing. Um, so make sure that the water that you're adding is the same temperature. You can use a little thermometer to test that and the same salinity. Um, and then what I do is I just take a siphon and I siphon out about five gallons worth of water from my uh, 29 gallon tank. And I do that um, once a week, but I, it doesn't matter how often you do water changes, what matters is your nitrate levels. So I do that when my nitrates reach 20 parts per million. Pay attention, test your water, test your water, test your water, test your water. Whether you're eating fresh water or salt water, test it because just because you tested it three days ago at Petco because you brought it in and the girl said, oh, this looks good, does not mean that your water is still good. Your water does not maintain the same amount. You have to test it yourself. Now, in terms of tank mates, um, I would not do more than two clownfish in one tank. You can do one completely by itself um, or you can do two. Now, the thing about clownfish is once they become, they're all born male and the most dominant one becomes the female. Once they become female, they cannot become male again, and females get really aggressive. So if you're going to do two clownfish, you need to either buy them both at the same time and make sure that they're both male, or if you have one, it probably has turned female. You have to make sure that the second one that you buy is a male. You can do more than one clownfish in, or more than two clownfish in a tank if you have an enormous tank. Those are called harems, but it's a little bit more advanced, and I wouldn't do it unless you personally are a little bit more experienced. I personally would not do a harem of clownfish. In terms of tank mates, a lot of people think that clownfish are peaceful, but the truth is they're actually kind of semi-aggressive. So you want to be looking for tank mates that kind of match their level of aggression. So for example, my tank also has like a yellowtail damsel in it, which is also aggressive. Something like a wrasse might be good, but if it's super duper peaceful, just know that your clownfish might pick on it. You can check compatibility on places like Aqua Advisor, which I think is a really, really good resource. I will link it down below. Um, Live Aquaria has a list of stuff. They're, they're a little more conservative than I personally am, but I think that's probably, it's probably better to lean on the conservative side of things in terms of what's compatible. But a lot of things can live with clownfish. Uh, for food, my clownfish eat um, omega-1 marine flake food, totally fine. Um, they'll accept just about anything, so I also feed some frozen food. But usually you can get a clownfish to eat pellets and um, flake food. Most clownfish that are sold now are captive raised, which means they're really hardy and they're used to accepting most aquarium foods. So whatever you have is probably fine for your clownfish. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I might have missed stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I think that clownfish are super duper cool. You can get them in all kinds of varieties. Um, I personally just have two normal Ocularis clownfish. Oh, one more thing that people often ask. Mama. No, you don't have to have an anemone with them. If you do do coral in your tank, a lot of times they'll um, host different kinds of coral. Um, I don't have coral in my tank and my clownfish hosted the power head. Real quick because I forgot to mention it, um, I would recommend a power head, especially if you have a slightly larger tank. You might be able to get away without a power head in like a 10 gallon tank um, or if your filter is moving enough water, but there's less oxygen in a saltwater tank than there is in a freshwater tank and so the power head will um, kind of help oxygenate the water a little bit. Not That's not exactly how it works, but a power head would be something that is beneficial. And you can get, you can get very pricey ones, but you can also get relatively inexpensive ones, um, like on Amazon. They were hosting the little pink castle that my, my four-year-old picked out, um, but they, they don't require an anemone. And if you're gonna do an anemone, I would look up anemone care, because the anemone is gonna take more work than the clownfish themselves are going to take. But don't be afraid of it. Honestly, my um, goldfish tank is a lot more work than my clownfish tank, and my clownfish are doing absolutely wonderful. Um, anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. I realize it was kind of long, um, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything that I forgot. Um, and keep in mind, what I'm talking about is like the most 
basic, basic, basic step. You can go more advanced than that, but it does not have to be a really difficult process with clownfish particularly. Um, and if you are interested in more saltwater content, let me know. I'm going to be setting up a 55 gallon saltwater tank coming up here pretty soon, which I'm very, very excited about. I have the tank and I have the stand um, and the lid and some decor stuff, but I'm gonna build it very, very slowly because there are some other things that I still need to pick up. I need more substrate and more dry rock and I have to build that into the budget because I can't just willy-nilly spend a bunch of money on fish stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, let me know down below. If you're new, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell next to the subscribe button. The cool thing about that bell is it will send you notifications. And if you get a notification to your phone and you're like, oh, Heidi uploaded a video, and then you click on that, YouTube really likes me. YouTube's like, oh, Heidi's bringing people to YouTube. So that actually benefits me a lot. Um, if you hit the bell and then click on my video as soon as you get a notification, let me know down in the comments if there's any other fish that you would like to hear about. Um, and I have gotten a couple of requests for stuff, for stuff on my betas. Um, a lot of people have asked for tank tours, so I will try to do that coming up here pretty soon. And then I have another video to film about a tragedy in my freshwater tank. So I will be filming a video about quarantine and sickness and all of that kind of stuff too. So be sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, also linked on my channel are all kinds of other saltwater uh, fish folks. I'm still kind of new to saltwater, so check some of them out. Some of my favorites are CJ's Aquariums, Miss Saltwater Tank, uh, Coralfish 12G. Um, I don't know if I put them on there, but Mile High Reefers. I, there's so many really good saltwater uh, people out there that have been doing this a lot longer than me. I'm still relatively new to it, so um, check them out too. And um, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.